Let me tell you about our newest partner, Mint Mobile. With Mint Mobile, you can drop your expensive cell phone plan without having to sacrifice coverage, speed, or data. They're able to provide such an amazing offer by cutting up the middleman and selling to you directly online. Plans start for as little as $15 a month. $15 a month, guys, that is so unbelievably cheap. And making the switch is incredibly easy. Keep your current phone and phone number and activate your plan in minutes. Remember to support those who help us. Just go to trymintmobile.com slash those guys to get started. That's trymintmobile.com slash those guys. Those guys. I took a really hot bath. What's your, when's the last time you took a bath? Oh, it's been since like my teenage years. I fucking love baths. Yeah, I miss them. It has turned into this weird like indulgence of mine. You hate. I pour myself a cup of wine. I get into the bath. I pour that cup of wine onto my dick. It's become incredible, Tyler. Is that why your penis is red? Nope. Oh. (laughs) Those guys you hate. It's got Prince Andrew written all over it. I was listening to like my shameful uh, admissions podcast, the one about like celebrity feuds, uh-huh. and they were talking about Prince William and Harry. Okay, and so when Harry went to his uncle, his father, uh, his father's coronation or what, whatever his coronation, when the queen died and they installed the next guy up, mm-hmm. they put him in like a back back row. You know who else was in that row? Mm. Prince Andrew. Ah, Put him in the molesty row. Yeah, that's fucked up. Man. Well, Prince Andrew definitely belong there. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not complaining on behalf of Prince Andrew. Oh. I'm complaining on behalf of Harry. Yeah, I didn't realize this meant so much to you. Well, I'm just that's shocking to me. It's you know what else is shocking to me? That Prince Andrew is still invited to coronations. Yeah, that's true. Maybe go ahead and leave him on the outside. Yeah, hopefully they don't bring him near any of the. He's gonna mind the children. nursery. <sighs> yeah. And we are back. Hey. Welcome back, Ryan. Uh, yeah, that actually, our conversation while we were off air. Prince Andrew's Nursery? Uh, yeah, they should probably remove the name sure. from, from there. Uh, it actually reminded me of that video I showed you either like last week or the week before of when the Queen and Marilyn Monroe met. Same age. And the Queen was just eye fucking the shit out of Marilyn Monroe. Hey, I get it. I kept calling her Queen Victoria who was born in 1827 and died in 1901. The Victorian era, That Tyler. is the Victorian era. So it, that was Queen Elizabeth. It was Queen Elizabeth, Of course, because she's been, uh, she's been alive, I believe, since then yes, as well. Yes, exactly. Uh, wow, we're uh, fools. Just No, I was the fool. Yeah. I, t- I got it totally wrong. Podcast Granny reached out with the, with the hand slapping the forehead emoji and was like, that's Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Which is one stop short of saying, you fucking moron. That, you know, the thing is about Queen Elizabeth, Alive for a long time. Very long time. As a matter of fact, one of the most notable things about her. Yeah. Yeah. It's the early 70s. Richard Nixon has declared drug abuse public enemy number one. He goes on to say, in order to fight and defeat the enemy, it is necessary to wage a new all-out offensive, a brand new war, unlike anything the world had seen. Everybody panic! (laughs) and then a year later we defeated drugs that was it we were good where was his mission accomplished banner the The, way the bush did it they had not invented (laughs) printing yet which was unfortunate the conspiracy well there was two main ones actually you have the infamous project mk ultra the LSD mind control experiment from the 1950s and the conspiracy that the CIA was introducing crack into the black communities in the 90s to fund a coup d'etat in South America. My wow. my, my voice to text changed it to cootie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that cootie. Many people don't know that um, America's first opioid uh, uh, pandemic was in the 1880s. Did you know that, Ryan? Was it just straight up opium? Were people smoking opium? Opioid epidemic. Have yeah, you the, ever smoked opium? No. I have. No. 
Have you? When I was growing up, opium, you could buy opium like as rocks. Like it was a thing. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Now that we know how addictive it is, I'm glad I never, I'm glad you're not like. It's never my thing. You know, wayfish and, and homeless. I told you I lived next to that guy who ate those uh, lollipops for. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And those, it, opium, it, it, all opiates, never my thing. Yeah. You can't drink on them. Now, they uh, fuck up your stomach. I, I want to be active. You know, I want to be able to move around and stuff. I don't want to hold a cigarette till it burns me to my bones. Oh, which happened to that guy. Yeah. Your neighbor. yeah. yeah. Drugs were almost completely unregulated uh, through, obviously, the 1800s and through the early 1900s as well, through okay. the mid 1900s. Well, yeah, there was famously cocaine and Coca Cola. Were they considering cocaine to be a problematic drug at that time? Not at the time, yeah. but as time went on, That's and how they you get shit done, <laughs> they realized how addictive it was. Of yeah. course, opium dens were common occurrences, specifically in Chinatowns in Asia, yeah. across the U.S. The majority of those addicted for the longest time were white upper middle class housewives sure. 60% of those addicted were women they say that those little recess filters in parliament cigarettes were for the housewives to pack the cocaine in there hit a bump and i would imagine vacuum the shit out of that place <laughs> i vacuumed so hard i took out the carpet what happened to the carpet <laughs> these wood floors are fucking incredible <laughs> And then public perception started to change when it was being pushed that no longer is opium for the upper middle class white housewife. Sure. But for gamblers, thieves, and the Chinese. Just general, <laughs> well, I was going to make a joke there until you threw the Chinese at the end. I didn't expect that. Well, it was the same thing with uh, with reefer madness. You know, you associate it with somebody who doesn't look like you. That's the thing. Yeah, that's, that's, it, that, that's the plan. It, and in my question, when you first started this, and I was going to wait, is this linked to just a general racism and tribalism? And let's, which I believe is still going on to this day. How many oh, yeah. black people have been in prison over the last 20 years based off of drugs yep. that would not have gotten a white person of the same age and situation put anywhere near a prison. It has already been proven by multiple statistics that white people use drugs at a higher rate than black people, but by far there are more people, more black people in prison because of those same crimes than white people. Now, is that per capita or is that just more white people because there are more white people? No, 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 it's per capita. Okay. It wouldn't make sense. Yeah, there's way more that's white really, people. That's, and, and, and because our punishment is less, it gives us more of a likelihood to do it. I mean, I don't even say this as a flex or anything like that. It just, in today's day and age, being white is an advantage. It's awesome. I say to my son all the time, if I get pulled, well, not all the time, but we've yeah. had the discussion of- Every time I, I get pulled over. Yeah, hey, dude, listen, it's <laughs> happening again. No, if, if, if something happens to you, something in this frame of if something happens to you and something happens to somebody of a different ethnic background in the exact same situation as you, it's not the same, yeah. dude. And anybody who tells you it is, is- uninformed or lying to you. Yep. Yeah, because the majority of power, overwhelmingly the majority of power, is in the hands of white people and people, and it is, uh, and I will just say scientifically, there is something in the human brain, or I guess in all species brains, where we are more attracted to those who look just like us. But we also are intelligent and self-aware, and we need to fight through that kind of shit. Well, I think that goes back to a time where that was very beneficial, where if yeah. you lived in a tribe of 18 people and somebody comes up that you don't know, you've got to be wary of it. Now the world is much smaller. We can travel. We can communicate. That's got to change. That's yep. got to evolve along with us. Well, we have seen time and time again that to go in such an extreme direction as a war on drugs that it invites a reaction of the opposing extreme from the other direction. Whatever you resist persists. Correct. Now, just look at prohibition as an example. Prohibition, it went on for 13 years. Pretty fucked up that they did it during the Great Depression. Like, come on, man, let people drink. There's gotta be a link. Come on. There's gotta be a link. And because of that prohibition, it put so much power in the hands of the mob. The millions and millions of dollars because people are going to drink. You people, can you can make it illegal. People are going to fucking drink. Even though it fucks you up, people need to get fucked up. People need it sometimes as a way to cope with things. Well, and I wonder how much of the act of you're going to tell me I can't do something, specifically something I've been doing for years, that kind of makes me want to do it even more. That's how I got into Mephiscopheles, Tyler. I'm sorry, what? Mephis Mep Mephiscopheles. What is Mephiscopheles? Uh, it was uh, it was an old uh, ska band 
that their like whole deal was that they were devil worshippers. The name of their album was God Bless Satan. Oh. And uh, <laughs> that's actually kind of good. Mom didn't love it. It was sure. it was it was sort of bullshit. They were a bunch of nerds. Sure. But man, I hid that I hid that CD under a potted plant out back. <laughs> That's a fact. I've never heard that that name before. How many sh- how many shameful admissions could I do on one show? <laughs> what uh? Well, you were a kid. You I would mean, know the song different. Saba 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 Saba. Hey hey hey. I'd have to hear it. That yeah. doesn't okay. ring a bell. All right. Uh, did they have any good music, or great, was it just the great music? Really? They were probably one of the. It, to this day, that's one of the few ska bands that I would listen to. I'm going to let you listen to some. We're gonna we're gonna take a I flight got, back. I got to check that out. Yeah. Well, Ryan, that's uh, it for for story number two. And everybody panic. I hope you guys are panicking because so, I'm being so serious. These, so these are general panics. General panics. I dig it. Things where they swept, they they sweep the nation. And while there is truth to all three examples that I have here, it is blown way out of proportion by people who are looking to take advantage of the situation. Manipulate. That's exactly right. People in power don't have our best interests at hand. We should make that a theme of the show. Now, Ryan. Yo. Weird me out with your vault of sound, please. Okay. Ryan's vault of sound. I find something that tickles my ear holes. I bring it to you. Now, this one, I am not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to let you guess. I hope you haven't heard it yet, but let's just go ahead and get into it. All right. Ryan's vault of sound. All right, Tyler. I hope it's better than that Christian Bale clip you played last week. That one. Oh, <laughs> look at you. Oh, doity, doity, doity. <laughs> I feel bad because I bet you that's like one of his worst moments. Yeah. And here we are playing it for everybody. Yeah, that reminds true. me when Alec Baldwin left that voicemail for his daughter. Oh. Oh. You little piggy. Or that time he shot that woman. Yeah, not as bad. Yeah. All right, Tyler. Hopefully you haven't heard this. I'm sure it's been making its way around the internet. You are plugged into the internet. But can you tell me? what this sound is. Now, there's some distortion there at the end, but tell... Okay, so you haven't heard it. That's great. Tell me what this sound is. I, I have no idea. It sounds like somebody talking through like a, a voice... Uh, what do they call a it? A tracheotomy? No, not, <laughs> my, my brain keeps telling me sympathizer, but that's definitely not the word. Uh, synthesizer. A synthesizer, uh, thank you. Look at this, look at this throat synthesizer. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play it for you one more time, and it is concerning a current event that is coming up. I know that's not helpful. <laughs> is that the Israeli-Palestinian war? This is the sound of Mike Tyson sprinting. <laughs> What? Mike Tyson running as hard as he can at 57 years old. That, that does not sound human. That is what Jake Paul is about to get into the ring with. It, it sounds like a ghoul of some kind. Or a Tasmanian devil's got your foot. <laughs> that is Mike Tyson running as hard as he can. Now, I will say... He looks like he's running in a fat. He's running fast for yeah. a 57 year old man. It's not the most elegant thing that you've ever seen. Sure. But the idea of anybody. Uh, now, listen, I grew up in the 80s. OK, but my, my time was the 90s, but I grew up in the 80s. Anybody getting into a ring with Mike Tyson at any age, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> That's a man, and now he's become more peaceful. He's open to psychedelics. He's done seemingly cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm-hmm. Scares the shit out of oh, me. Oh, yeah. Scares the shit out of me. I bet you he won't have trouble bringing that fire back up to the surface no, when he needs it. No, yeah. I, I think therapy is just learning how to deal with it, not extinguishing <laughs> exactly it. Exactly yeah, right. I know. That's exactly right. That, uh, oh, boy. That. <laughs> That's like that, that's like saber rattling, but I don't even mean it in the phrase that it that it's used today. I mean literally, where they would the armies would would rattle their sabers to create such a noise that it would scare the shit out of the opposing army. That would terrify me. It is, and I like that. We can review animals that make the craziest noises to oh scare their to scare their their enemies. Mike Tyson. 
I think he's going to eat Jake Paul's face off. Oh, man. He's done it already once. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, he started with an ear. Oh, well, yeah. A little aperitif. I would. I would. That is actually. I'm not into the celebrity boxing or whatever. That's one that I actually wouldn't mind watching simply because I know he's older. I never got to watch Mike Tyson when I was young. I'd love to watch Mike Tyson in the ring. They were talking about him on one of these shows that I listened to. And there's one. And I forget the guy's name where he didn't knock him out because he would just knock people out yeah. cold. And it was a million times worse than the knockouts because he just pummeled this guy. Ugh. He just pummeled. He just beat this guy upside down. At a certain point, you just lie down. Just give up, yeah. dog. You've done it. Yeah. We, we're all proud. At the height of his power, he would. The, I've seen videos where he would enter the ring and the opposing the the opponent was visibly shaking. Not not even just scared, shaking. He 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 was. He had your mind before he had your body. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that is Ryan's vault of sound. <laughs> Excellent, Ryan. Thank you, Excellent. My man. And please, please do me a favor and never play that sound for me again. Kamehameha. <laughs> it's 1947. We're only a couple years removed from World War II. Senator Joseph McCarthy is on your TV, black and white, of course. Sure. As he warns you about the growing communist threat, your neighbors, your friends, even your own children can be swept up in communist propaganda. Sure. Do you remember this time? You were there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As uh, I was young at that time. A young communist. Just me and the pinkos, <laughs> just, you know, breaking some bread. Uh, yes, this is this this has always drawn lines between McCarthyism and the Salem witch trials. In, in terms of, oh, just pointing fingers. That's where we're yeah. in, in almost like the satanic panic, like you're talking about, where there's so you almost want to say, you know, uh, good wife uh, Bartholomew is a witch before she gets you. Yeah. This is where everybody was accusing everybody of communism and ever, all the Hollywood actors were all fingering each other, if you will. It was a it was a it was a crazy time. Ooh, that sounds fun. Sure. Yeah. Well, it seemed like the 11th hour was upon us as the Soviet Union tested their very first nuclear device in 1949 and widespread fear that those weapons would be dropped on the U.S. Was that the beginning of the Cold War? Yes, it was. Wow. It, it, the Cold War began immediately after World War II because now that the Axis powers were gone, what was left was Soviet Union. Now, the fact of the matter is this was all very real. This was a very real thing. This isn't a conspiracy. They did test their nuclear weapon. Oh, sure. There were communists. Sure. Like, this was a real thing. Yeah, but I mean, I would say that's kind of true in the satanic panic as well. I'm sure that there was some tiny little sliver of truth in there. Well, the satan no, the satanic panic was totally fabricated, but the other two examples, like I said earlier, the other two examples that I gave, Y2K and the war on drugs, those were legitimate there was, problems. There was a basis there. But these people who are just rat bastards yeah. come in and manipulate the situation to their advantage at the detriment of millions of other people of millions of other people. So wait a minute. What you want me to believe is that the government sees fear and they want to use that to their own advantage. You're lying. I need you to believe You're me. You're lying. This is a conspiracy. <laughs> I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. <laughs> Damn it. That was the line I was going to use. Well, testimonies were given by multiple former members of the American Communist Party because communism was fairly widely accepted in the early 1900s. It was just another political party. Yeah, it's, you know? it's uh, it, the equivalent to democracy. Just exactly. In, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, just another form of government. Correct. Now, that uh, as I said, testimonies were given um, to Congress that Soviet spies had infiltrated the U.S. Even some of the spies themselves, U.S. citizens, later on spoke tr truth to this Obviously, only after the statute of limitations had, sure. had passed. As one does. <laughs> However. Yeah, that's what we need to get in here is a statue of limitations. I, 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 I said statue, damn no, it. No, I'm saying we need, I like that. You know what? I, I think I've said this on a previous show. I'm embarrassed to admit how long throughout my life I thought it was statue of limitations. Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> However, as we, as we just said earlier, it was also used as a tool and scare tactic to remove 
others from their positions of power, from political figures to people in the entertainment industry. Two very famous example, three very famous examples was Charlie Chaplin. He had to literally flee the country. I did not know that. Because of the accusation. And um, the man, I'm, their names are escaping me. The couple from I Love Lucy. Desi and... And Lucy. Yep. <laughs> Love that lady. <laughs> they were accused and they didn't flee the country, but their careers, they had significant trouble in their careers afterwards simply because they were accused. And she was accused not because she was communist, but because she was a pro labor, which is still something we're seeing to this day. Anybody who's pro labor. Don't bring that shit over here. The people in power want to shit on Don't them. Don't bring that shit over here. So it, these, these uptight athletes going against these, these owners, <laughs> I think it's bullshit. <laughs> No, and, and, and I think that that's, and that is the parallel between the Salem witch trials where it starts off as this thing where, yes, uh, you know, other governments coming in and trying to undermine your government, we all understand how that's an issue. It gets turned into this thing where people are using it for their own good. Yeah. And, and in in Salem where people were just accusing people that they just straight up didn't like. Yeah. Oh, hey, you're, yeah. you're a fucking communist, sure. bitch. Yeah. How about that? Drown, bitch. How about that? Yeah. Go, go be a communist at the bottom of a lake. That's right. And, and that's the thing is now we see it uh, like these people in power where it's like, oh, you want less hours for workers so they can spend more time with their families? That guy's a communist. That guy is a commie. <laughs> Look, he's wearing a red shirt right now. <laughs> it looks it looks good on him. I gotta be honest, but lock him up. So yeah. And, and and how did McCarthy get to the top of this? Why was he I think he was just the most vocal about okay, it? Okay, he was he's just spearheading some, the he's yeah. just someone who just he's happy. It's it's and it is it's not as prevalent seemingly as it was today, but there's always been people in power who are just shameless. They will say whatever the fuck they can to become more in power. So you're trying to tell me, Tyler, <laughs> Come on. that high places in government call to a specific type of people who have some sort of megalomania? Why don't you kiss my ass? I need you to believe me. You're a communist. <laughs> I, do, I do look good in red. You do. Dude, have you ever seen Tyler wielding a sickle? <laughs> it is incredible. And whatever that other instrument is. It's a I, hammer. It, oh, it's is a, it the it's oh, a sickle and hammer? That's right. There you go. I, commonly uh, referred to as a hammer and sickle, but I get it. You that's said a, it for shits that, and giggles. That's embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> and it really speaks to how these things they're just cyclical. These things that we just we saw literally a hundred years ago are just popping up again. Because we've had two red scares in this country. One immediately after World War One, when Russia had their revolution, and immediately after World War Two, when the Cold War started. It just it's these things that just now it's not commie, it's woke. That guy's woke, and Same it's like, thing. and it's like what a, the a, a little worse actually, <laughs> if you ask me. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck does woke even mean? Yeah, that doesn't well, even mean anything. It's an all-purpose cleaner, you know what <laughs> I mean? You could use it on anything. And I hate to quote famous people, especially when I don't remember who it was. Ah, that's even worse. But who said? He who forgets history is doomed to repeat it. Or I don't what, know. that is a famous line. I don't know who whatever, said it. Uh, we can review. Yeah. Um, that's it. These everything from fashion to facial hair to government conspiracies, we're all just living in a, in a, in a big flat circle. Sure, I assume. Not? I assume all circles are flat. Yeah, you Except don't want spheres. You don't want a bumpy circle, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, let's uh, let's get to week in review, and we will close out the yeah, show. Yeah, get rid of this. <laughs> Ah, we can review. Every once in a while, Ryan and I will say something wacky, but a lot of times it's uh, it's just a question of, of what is the information behind this? And on Weekend we Review, we go back, we answer those questions, or for those wacky times, we call each other out. It's a good time. We used to say things with a lot more uh, as a statement instead of a question. It was a better time. Yeah. We were dumber and more fun. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, yeah, baby. You ain't wrong. Uh, Ryan, last week... You asked what exactly, because we've been talking about it a lot over the last couple of months, what exactly is human trafficking? Okay. Did I look it up? Correcto! The original yes and no. Pretty good. Human trafficking rever uh, refers to the illegal trade of human beings, typically for the purposes of forced labor, sexual exploitation, or commercial sexual exploitation. It involves the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or 
receipt of persons through force, fraud, so on and so forth. So it could be any of those things. You could be moving a person somewhere. You could be holding them hostage and forcing them to work sexually or through labor. Any of these things is human trafficking. So it's not just sex. It's not just you sex. You could be forcing somebody into like pyramid type slavery. That's exactly right. Oh, okay. Yep. So there you go. Look at us getting down to the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. Tyler, last week, I said that there was a flight attendant. I looked this up too. That... Okay, yeah. I said that there was a flight attendant that got up, shit on the cart. By quitting, right? By quitting, yeah. shit on the cart, and then pulled the emergency slide and slid off. Was I right? Was it? I was not right. You were close, though. Those were two separate people. Uh So tell me what it is that you found out. Oh, see, I didn't find the airline attendant that quit by doing that. When I... You didn't find the airline attendant that quit by... Shitting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I found... Neither did I, but I did find the airline attendant that quit by sliding out the slide. Oh, okay. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great way to quit. Sure. Uh, For me, I found United Airlines Flight 976... Okay. ...was a regularly scheduled flight from uh, Buenos Aires to New York... And in 1995, upon landing, one passenger, Gerard Finneran, a Wall Street investment uh, banker, was arrested by the FBI because during the flight, Finneran, as you said, a Wall Street investor, had been refused further alcoholic beverages for good reason. Which is very embarrassing. <laughs> if you've ever been cut off, I, I have been cut off. I, have I been? I think I've been cut off. On an, air, on an airplane? No, never on oh. an airplane. Oh. Or I've had to cut people off. It's yeah. a tough scenario. Yeah. Drunk people don't like to be told what to do. No. Yeah. Tyler, yeah. stop eating hot dogs. <laughs> I refuse. Yeah, exactly. Well, when he was refused uh, further alcoholic beverages, uh, the cabin crew obviously determined he was intoxicated. After they thwarted his attempt to pour himself more. I res- <laughs> up to this point, I'm still with you, Finneran. Do you think he's forcing his way through? Or do you think he's trying to sneak his arm around the beverage cart and sneak one in? I like I like the idea of him just casually approaching where they keep it. Just like, hey, you know, like, hey, I'm one of you guys, you know, like playing it off all drunk. Stole one of their name tags. Yeah. Like, I'm a flight attendant. <laughs> I like it. Finneran then threatened one flight attendant with violence, physically attacked another one. You're losing me, Finneran. And then went into first class, the first class compartment, which was also carrying Portuguese president Mario Soares and Argentinian foreign minister Guido Di Tella and their security details. Number one. Love a Guido. <laughs> Love sure. a Guido in any, any way, any time. Yeah. Guido me up, baby. Number two, there's security detail. Where are you at? Yeah. What is happening here? Yeah. That's, Please continue. That's totally fair. What are you doing? He then climbed onto the service trolley. They said defe- defecated. I'm going to go, go ahead and say he shit himself using linen napkins to wipe himself off. And then when you say shit himself as if his pants were still on, his pants were down. You have to imagine he got some of that on himself. Oh, for sure. Come on. He shit himself. No, 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 no. Shitting yourself is when your pants are still on. And then he left a present of the leftovers for the flight attendants. And then he, uh, later, he later tracked and smeared his feces around the cabin. Food service was canceled, by the way. And uh, Yes, it was. He wasn't even wearing a hairnet. <laughs> and, and they tried to land an emergency landing in Puerto Rico. Sure. And Puerto Rico was like, hey, because you guys have dignitaries, foreign dignitaries on 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 the bo- on your plane, uh, it's a security risk. Sure. I'm sure that they were just doing their guys, excuse the pun, a solid and being like, no, 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 no poopy here in our airline. There's no chance that was a solid. No. Uh, and and what the thing is, is that um, also, yeah, you're not leaving all that shit here. Exactly. Uh, Finneran's attorney claimed he had been suffering from a severe case of traveler's diarrhea, <laughs> which is, hey, we, we should look into that, and had been prevented from using the first class toilet to his seat just outside that section by security. Uh-huh. Um, How do you argue cl- uh, climbing on the, the food trolley? You've never had to go to the bathroom so bad that everything looks like a bathroom? Excuse me, do you have an ice bucket by any chance? (laughs) That would have been better, right? (laughs) So my question is this. Something with a lid. Have you, and I've already know the answer to this. My answer is probably no. Been so drunk that this is, forgive the term, 
what comes out of you? No. That's crazy, no. dog. A Wall Street investment banker, I don't know if I'm assigning some sort of quality to this person that I shouldn't, but I picture you in a three-piece suit of some sort. Mm-hmm. Like, dog, what's bubbling up in there? And, and I'm not just talking about your guts. Yeah. I, well, I bet you it comes with a lot of ego, a lot of uh, entitlement. Obviously. I would imagine entitlement. A lot is a of Dariara. Big, a lot of Dariara. Yeah. I've never heard the medical term traveler's diarrhea. It makes sense, though. <laughs> Ow. It makes you're eating food that you're not normally used to. Right, you're, you're not you, you're not on your schedule with the toilet. You should have been his lawyer. I'm just saying, <laughs> if the poop does not stink, you shall not. I'm gonna work on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get back to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, and Ryan and, and just and just to write this up, to wrap this up, the man who used the slide to quit was the JetBlue flight attendant from Pittsburgh to New York City. In August 9th, 2010, they landed at JFK. Steven Slater, Steven Slater, a veteran flight attendant, announced over the plane's public address system that he had been abused by a passenger and was quitting his job. He then grabbed and guzzled two beers oh, good. and exited the plane by deploying the evacuation slide and sliding down. That is awesome. That's pretty awesome. That is, I'm glad he wasn't the one who pooped. That makes the story infinitely better. I, I imagine that is also a federal crime. Absolutely. I would imagine yeah. that he, he was greeted by M-17s, <laughs> if that's a gun. Yeah, and oh, oh, and by the way, the guy who pooped everywhere? Uh, Finnerin. Finnerin. Uh, he was he was found guilty of his crimes, obviously. He, DNA, DNA everywhere. <laughs> uh, $5,000 fine from the government, uh-huh. and he had to pay... Other passengers and the airline, a total of $48,000. That's some expensive shit. That is, that is a literal That's expensive, some expensive shit. That's expensive shit right there. And Ryan- That was for, a long boy. That was a long boy. For my final one, we're running a little long here. Sure. Uh, last week, you asked the question, are humans the only species that negatively affect their surrounding environment? <laughs> no. Your, your pro-human agenda disgusts me. <laughs> Stand up for the human being. It's disgusting. Uh, first of all, you have invasive species, which destroy their ecosystems. Species that are introduced to environments that they don't normally belong. Okay, fair. And we get a lot of those here in South Florida. Agree. I, I mean, they're all over the world. Australia is a, a, a it's a basically a quarantine zone. If you bring even one species over oh, there, yeah. it could affect the entire ecosystem. I remember that Johnny Depp Amber Heard video. They brought their dog, which was so weird. That was, that video upset me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I did not like that. Talk about entitlement. It was like somebody holding a gun to the back of their head. It just, it was off-putting nonetheless. Uh, and, and also not just invasive species, but another species like beavers. Beavers, when they build dams, can flood entire areas and kill off... Uh, uh, different animals. Sure, but I so one could argue that that's part of the system. Well, but you could also argue we're part of the system. I won't. I will. I will n- again, Tyler. Free human beings. Again, you are. <laughs> ugh, yeah. I'm all done. All right, Tyler. Last week, for some ungodly reason, I asked, "Where does pocket lint come from?" <laughs> did I look it up? And where did it Collect go? <laughs> Pocket lint, and this is the reason why I even bring it up. Also known as, you want any guess on what pocket lint is also known as? No, I have no idea. Nur. G N U R R. Nur. I've never heard that word before. Uh, it's debris, including bits of fabric, as well as small shreds of paper and tissue that are often found in pockets. It may sometimes be running. I mean, it's just by having something in your pocket and you wash your pants. Ah, gotcha. Also, did John Wayne Gacy have kids? Correcto! Ah! Michael Gacy and Christine Gacy. Ah, two kids. There you go. I'm sure they're fine. I also looked up Faces of Death, which we decided needs its own segment because it's all types of fucked up. And we said foods as status symbol, Tyler. Oh, yeah. I have a top 10. You ready to hear it? American or just in general? Um... That's fine. Yeah. Just give it to me. Number 10, edible gold leaf. Number nine, white truffle oil. Okay, yeah. These all make sense, right? Yeah, yep, yep. Number eight, champagne. Okay, yep. Number seven, beluga or... Oh, wait, they did this one twice. Uh, Beluga caviar. Okay. Number six, saffron. Number five, wagyu steak. Okay, yep. Number four, foie gras. Yep. Number three, truffles. Yep. Number two, Kobe beef. Mm-hmm. And number one, caviar, which they oh. already did for some reason. Yeah. I don't even know why. Wait, but that, the, the first caviar was which one? It was Beluga or 
Isn't that a whale? I thought caviar came from fish. I didn't know it could come from whales, too. Do not make me Weekend Review inside yeah, Weekend yeah. Review, Tyler. That's fair. And totally fair. that is Weekend Review outside of Weekend Review. Nice. Great job. Great job, Ryan. Fantastic. Hell that yeah. is another episode in the books. We kicked ass. Oh, we did. Um, tell them how we can how they can reach out and touch us. Those guys you hate.com. We're serving all sorts of Kobe beef and truffles and foie gras over there. None for you. Um, those guys underscore you hate at Instagram and YouTube, TikTok. Yeah. Those guys you hate all the way through, baby. That's right. That's right. Get on over there. Help us out. Give us some love. We're out here cranking over hot microphones to keep you guys happy and we love you guys thank you for supporting us please and and our your subscriptions mean so much to us your addition to the cult means so much to us thank you to podcast granny for churning away as always man she's kicking ass podcast granny has been taking care of our social media for us and she has been crushing it she's doing great she is i'm very appreciative she of is. her she is worth i don't say it enough every penny <laughs> i get that ryan yo what's the moral of the story Be very conscious with your sacrifices in both terms. Be conscious in what you're committing yourself to. Don't just sign up for anything, but also sacrifice can be a beautiful way to change your life as Tyler is going through right now. It is very powerful. It is a way of transitioning. It is almost a magical thing. Uh, sometimes the things that you don't like in life can be as powerful, if not more, than the things that you do. So let's all be mindful and let's all sacrifice with purpose, not for no reason. Well said. Thank I you, love my it. Man. What's the moral of the story? Uh, the moral of the story, I will continue with the theme of this week, which is... Watch out, everybody! <laughs> everybody panic! Uh, that it is... Uh, we obviously want to remain on guard. We want to be, be aware of things, be knowledgeable about things. But let's also try our best to not get wrapped up in the fear of things. There is no reason to be afraid of things that are not directly happening to us at the moment. Like if communists start shooting up your street, that's a time to, to, to be very scared. That is totally understandable to be scared. But to, to listen to people who want to incite that fear over these things, which just happens time and time again, we're seeing it today with so many different things, don't allow it to... to consume you is all I'll say. And it's, and it's tough. It's tough to be aware of those things. Well, and the system is set up to use that in the way that you are now preaching against. Anytime you turn on the news, be scared of this, be scared of that. Buy two by fours for Home Depot. Fuck you, local news. It, it is the reason why every time we come on here, I ask you about what's going on in the world because I have completely taken myself out of that system. Yeah. Per perhaps to my own detriment in certain points, but I believe I'm living a happier life in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah, no, abs absolutely. And that's the thing is I'm, I myself am trying to find a balance between informed and not being consumed by, I, I don't want to doom scroll anymore. It fucking sucks. And I'm getting that awareness. The healthier I'm getting, the more I'm, anytime I go on Reddit, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? This, this does not bring me pleasure. This sucks. Yeah. We are those guys you hate. Be kind or we'll scroll you. That's red circle. That's, that's Go, actually probably not true. Go ahead. Yeah, it's like like diseases and stuff. Yeah, no. If you ever have an infected butt, R Ryan and I are discussing. Would you rather have AC or toilet paper? I, I'm going toilet paper. There is no replacement for AC. You there's. I could rinse my ass off under the the bath spigot. Can you still say spigot? Sure. Yeah, it sounds wrong. Yeah, I don't know. It's close. I, I'm not seeing. You I could just. I could just in move. the. Oh, I'm coming. I get. Oh, that's right. What would be a replacement for AC? Like a bucket of ice water with a fan over it? You move it? to a co cooler climate. Okay. You, I, you California, get... we're all coming over. <sighs> I don't know. I, I'm taking AC. And, and toilet paper is just a form of... That doesn't mean that like napkins haven't been invented or... 
uh, you know, pa- oh. paper towels. Okay, you know what? You make an excellent point. Yeah, you're, right, that's crazy. Let's, let's move the goalposts a little bit. Either no AC or you're not allowed to wipe your butt with anything. I'm wiping my ass. Yeah, there nah, you go. because that'll kill me. You know what I mean? I, I, I What would happen if so your no AC for you. ass gets infected? Uh, shameful admission. And I think between the two of us, I would be better because I don't mind being... Red circle. Are we starting all over again? Yeah, one minute and 24 seconds. No, just so I can link up with the audio. Are you wearing a ring? I am wearing a ring. Huh. I got married. We went and eloped. Who dat? No, no. This is a uh, this is an aura ring. Okay. It's a... Uh, gay? It's, uh, yeah, kind of. It's kind of <laughs> gay. I tried to get black, but all they had was silver. Like your aura? Uh, it's, uh, it's like... I've always been so jealous of all the fitness tracking stuff on oh, okay. your... On your uh, Apple Watch, sure. but I'm so Give addi- it be risk cancer. I'm so, exactly. <laughs> I'm so addicted to my phone already that I don't want to include a physical thing on my body that will just grab my attention. At hey, any time. you got a text that you don't give a shit about? Exactly. So this thing has all the same fitness cool. stuff uh, without the screen and all that stuff. Is that your wedding finger? It is my wet wedding finger. Okay. Yeah. He's married to the grind. Yeah. The thing is, and this is super douchey of me to just bring up. Hold on a second. It, Wait. Let it breathe. Go. But it's a brag, and they tell you to put it on your non-dominant hand, but guess who is uh, that term I can't think of right now? <laughs> if he was a deer, he'd be ambidextrous. <laughs> I'm ambidextrous, baby. Oh, my boy's ambidextrous. Yeah. You heard that shit here first, bitch. Am I going to throw the ball left hand? Am I going to write out a letter to you right, right hand? hand? <laughs> Neither particularly great. <laughs> Yeah, it's neither yeah. is all that. That's good. really cool, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I have Tr- been track your sleep, all that stuff. Uh, now that I love because I would love to track my sleep, but there ain't no way in God's green hell that I am wearing my watch to bed. Well, it ain't gonna happen. Sure. Well, they do have apps that you can leave your phone on your mattress and it tracks the rise and fall of your breath and all that stuff. I've had that. Yeah. And I question the 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 effectiveness of it, especially when I had it. I was sleeping in bed with somebody else. Like, how are you delineating my farts? That's fair. Or, excuse me, <laughs> movements. Yeah, your breath. Have you <laughs> It's a type of breath, I guess. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta listen to that I back <laughs> later. <laughs> Relegated to lower breath. That just made me realize. I uh, I have been in, in my room with somebody sleeping in my bed. I will say... Please don't. Please I, I will don't. not say who it is. Don't make me bleep. And they and they farted while they were sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a human. I never occurrence. forgave them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I just I just let the uh, the resentment build <laughs> and build the residuals, uh, physical and mental. Yeah. Well, that sounds healthy as hell, buddy. Sure. Um, okay, but seriously, we got to get into the show. There's a million things going on. Yes, we do. But we should not have been talking about any of this stuff, Tyler. Why? Because there's something that's seriously important. And I know we're... Oh. Oh, there's a gag. Uh, yeah, it's this a, is ser- you're smiling oh, right because now. Because sometimes... Yeah, you're right. It's you're a building ga- up. But this is real. This is real. Okay. This is real. Are you ready? Yes. Look at me. Look at me. My coffee pot! <laughs> my coffee pot! Tyler, my... You're, co- <laughs> you're ridiculous. You're ridiculous. I, dude, I am suffering in silence out loud, Ryan, man. Ryan is usually up uh, probably like 30 minutes before I nah, leave my been, room. You've been getting up pretty... I, I'm up, but I'm milling about. Yeah. You're, you're getting up around... You're coming downstairs around the same time as I, me. I am, but I... Who cares? My coffee uh, But I wake up and I and I like to meditate now. So I, so I come downstairs and Ryan usually has his morning routine going already. He's in full swing. Today, I had to leave the house for an appointment. Coffee pot. And I was there for the magic that was Ryan's coffee machine totally breaking down on him. I've never seen somebody have an anxiety attack so early. Uh, you know what Sue's <laughs> at? Coffee. That's, dude, it's bullshit. It is bullshit when I buy a coffee pot for nineteen ninety five <laughs> from Target. I want to give it to my grandkids. That's bullshit. Yeah. This is the third coffee pot that I bought since we've been in this house. No, one of them was just the coffee pot itself. User error. Not the you, machine. User <laughs> error. Yeah. You dropped it that second time. No, I I hit the I hit the uh, the, the marble. Yeah, whatever. We're very plush over here. Bit. And but if you don't know, if you're just uh, joining us for our first show, it's trash. welcome. Ryan is what you would call a creature of habit. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder about the people in my yoga class who have literally only seen me wearing one outfit. Yeah. I wonder if they're like, huh, does this guy go home this or is destitute. he Ronald McDonald? 
<laughs> yeah, so my coffee pot. Now, I didn't break it. I just went to flip the switch today, and the switch shall not be flipped. There is no consistency with the button pushing. It's crazy. Yeah. There's usually a click. There was nary a click to be had. They and, sure don't make $20 technology like they used to. Oh, dude, if you if Abuela had bought a $20 coffee pot in her lifetime, you think we wouldn't be using it right now? That's because $20 back then was like $1,000 today. And they cared about their citizens. They that cared too. about their citizens. We're ruining... Our, our our planet, we're ruining our society <laughs> one coffee pot at a time. We've come full circle. I'm serious, I know dude. you're serious. It, I, I, we're, it's, everything's a big gag for this show. Everything's so funny with the ha-has and the hee-hees. Uh-huh. It's literally trash. That's it. It is literally trash. It's literally That's trash. Well now, now I got to throw it in the fucking garbage. I got five scoops of Folgers Best in there, Tyler, which I could take out. But I was going to say, at least yeah. that isn't going bad. Yeah, you it's in a filter. It'd actually be very easy. Yeah, not a reuse filter, I hope. What? <laughs> All right, enough of that. But seriously. Ryan had to reuse a coffee filter one time when he ran out of them. I had to pull it out of yeah, the garbage. But that's out of the garbage. garbage. I, I'm very addicted to coffee, and I don't like change. Mm-hmm. I get, like, sentimental attachments to... Uh, Inanimate objects. Yeah, yeah. I, re- I really do. Yeah. My water bottles are very close to me. I left one at the barber, and it, it hurt me. Nonetheless, <laughs> Tyler, Jimmy Butler... Yeah, out. Yeah, out. I know. Out. I know. For, uh, for the rest of the playoffs. Yeah, for, for, for weeks. So, yeah, pretty much. And and you would assume. You come back for the finals. Nobody gives a <laughs> shit about this, but you would assume that that uh, that's it. That's a wrap, huh? I assume so, yeah. 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 I mean, we got to play the Bulls, so maybe there's a chance. But well, once we get to the Celtics, like, bro, no, exactly. no fucking way. But, um, but so, and the reason I bring it up is for a little bit of content. He sent out a tweet is are we is it still a tweet yeah call it a tweet it's fine um i'm not calling it an x fuck you he sent out an xer uh where he said and i'm gonna say this about jimmy butler he is the type of sports superstar that i love i love the way that he wields his power i love his whole oeuvre which is a word i'm trying to use more often he's a kook but like an aggressive kook tough guy kook oh no i love it i love it and for people who don't know Jimmy Butler, star of the Miami Heat, and you say, I don't care about sports. I am listening to the show uh, to feel better about my mental health because you guys are dissolving rapidly. Um, well, just- at least your knee hasn't broken down on you like Butler's did. There you go. Feel better about that. I'm trying to make our audience feel better. Sorry. Too soon? Way too soon. Sorry. This guy, what happens is in the NBA and perhaps in all of sports, I don't know, You get together at the very beginning of the year. You have a media rounds where they take your picture and then they go ahead and they use it for the rest of the year. Fucking love it. Last year, what he did, all of a sudden out of nowhere, Jimmy Butler shows up in... It's not weave. like it's, Emo it's, gear. It, it, no, no, no. Last year was extensions. He had oh. dreadlocks. Oh, okay. And everybody's like, did Jimmy Butler get fake hair over the year? Yeah. Turns out he was just doing it. So for the rest of the year, he would look ridiculous mm-hmm. when they showed his picture in game, come in commercials, any of that stuff. That is the kind of anarchy that I am here for. It's, it's playful. It's whimsical. It's thumbing your nose at the system. And it's what I want from all of my celebrities. And then this year, as you alluded to, he showed up looking like uh, the lead singer from AFI in 2001. I was, I was thinking My Chemical Romance. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> With the swoop over the eye, the the lip piercing, yeah. dyed black hair. He's a black man. Yeah. And and so what is that hair? Is it is that his actual hair like straightened out? I, I assume it, so, I, I yeah. Think, I think it might be. He had it straightened out and then brushed in the way of a teenager mid-2000s. That's right. It was so funny and you still see it to this day yeah. he tweeted out to kelly Ubre, the guy who he, he he injured his leg with yeah we throw in hands which i i, I thought was funny yeah. I, I assume it's a joke i thought it was of course is a fun way to lo- use social media that's his style of humor he talks shit to Embiid all the time Who's talking his best buddy who is one of his best friends in the sure, world fuck and he, you, Embiid. yeah exactly you're too good <laughs> it's not fair yeah, I wanted him. Yeah, we need a, another superstar. Anyway, moving on to hey, who's it? Well, even Duncan Robinson or uh, Scary Terry uh, could have put us over. We played a great game, especially in the first half. Yeah, again, nobody gives a shit about this. Uh, I know. Well, moving on to more interesting news for the grand audience at large. Hello. You know, we keep alluding to this uh, to this whistleblower for Boeing, the new one that came forward. You, you say do. somebody? I, I don't keep up with events. Well, yeah, but we talk about it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't deserve its own segment, 
but give, a, give it, a little backstory here for the people who may not have heard it. Well, Boeing is going through all these problems where, you know, because of them wanting to uh, save as much money as possible or make as much money as possible, they've really cut costs across the 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 building of their planes yes. and shit is just falling off mid flight. As I'm sure everybody is familiar with the social media clips of doors not being where they're supposed to be yeah. on airplane flights. Yeah. Instead of being on the plane, it's careening down to the ground sure. towards people's homes. Yep. Uh, Most unpredictable door since Jim Morrison. Yeah, it's pretty It's good. the Lizard yeah. King, Tyler. Yeah, it's probably all that heroin. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, that made him pretty stationary. Sure. Uh, so the first whistleblower that came through to tell Congress that shit was bad over there. How's he uh, doing? Is he okay? He was uh, epstein Sure. Clear, seemingly. Somebody suicided him. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. And, uh, and now there's a second whistleblower who has come forward, and he is appearing today in front of Congress to testify about Boeing. And he has gone on record at saying that he is, quote, at peace if something happens to him. Wow. So have they done what I called for, which is put him in the Magneto jail? I can't imagine. Okay, now what about this? This is just coming to me. Okay. What about a giant hamster ball? Okay, so he's still mobile. Uh -huh. He's... Now, now the problem is with poisons and gases, I guess, unless you lock it off to the world... Uh, which would cause its own problems, but a giant hamster ball, like a mobile magneto jail. That's uh, an interesting idea. The only Thank problem, you. the only problem with that is, is we've already got ramps for people in wheelchairs and braille for the blind. We're just gonna have to redo all of our architecture to now fit giant hamster if balls. If you elect me, I will make wider ramps, <laughs> <laughs> hamster balls for everyone. But I mean, think about that. You want to make such a positive change that you're like, dude, I'm fine if they if they kill me. I just want the truth to come out. Do you think they mean it? And I don't mean to. I mean, I, I think that's like a warning. Like, yo, if something happens to me, it was not me. Strategic. Would you do it? Would I do what? Would you give this information? I would like to think I yeah. I, I would, but it's like asking me, would you do blank for a million dollars and me going, hell, hell yeah, no. Oh. But, but, or hell yeah, but then you show me the million dollars or you tell me the thing and I would immediately change my answer. So I don't know. It, it is it, because you have family to worry about. You have just the anxiety of waking up every day and thinking, is today the day? I read somewhere, where was it? Like North Korea or somewhere or China or something. If you've been issued the death penalty, they don't tell you what day it, it's coming. So every day you wake up, you wonder, is today the day? That's fucked up. Yeah. A little psychological torture for prisoners. Generally nice people. I don't know. Yeah. But, but, um, Holocaust in China, right? That's a crazy story. And I believe at the heart of that story that you've been reporting on very well, by the way. Thank you. Um, it, it, it's, it's just proof of the government. It just being out of control. And when I say the government, I believe that these corporations, that Wall Street is our government. Yeah, definitely. And, and the idea that they can just have people bumped off. Don't even look into the Clintons and people who have mysteriously died around them. Uh, just politics in general. God only knows how many of our political figures over the years have had people, as you uh, so eloquently put it, bumped off. Yeah, it's sure. It's like a 1930s mob. You want me to whack hit. a guy? You want me to off a guy? <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, I changed my mind. We can review people who have mysteriously died around the Clintons. Okay. Very interesting. Right, I love enough. a good conspiracy theory. Fair enough. I also love doing the show. Let's do it.